process and our expectation that we'd actually have the output of that based on the normal reports that are going to the network by ourselves to the IT. Unfortunately, that won't be available in December. So we haven't been able to inform the strategy to the extent that we would like to have a reconsideration of that great study. But as Shane pointed point out, that would be one of the first reasons that we would be upgrading this and review this. And that will, will follow. Um, slightly confusing to comment about passengers and freight on the same line because that happens on all, all of the lines of the passenger on the same line. They, they are lines that accommodate passenger and freight flows. Just a lot of instances of some of the freight is moving at night and passengers are on, on, on the lines. And as I said, in respect of the Google line, it is one of the options for open access into the port that we considered to enable the link from the Ed Shill area down to the link of the port to be maximized for the long term line. John? No, Fred, I'm going to go in with the work of the
And also uh, the fact that, um, as has been mentioned, this is a living and breathing document. It will be regularly reviewed. And I think that makes it nimble, it makes it flexible to make sure we can continually react to different things that need to happen across the city region. And we'll continue to stand a very good step. Because one of the things I think we should be most proud of is very few city regions have something as strategic and as forward-looking as this. And this book, Liverpool City Region, really in that premier division of infrastructure that we want to be in. So with all of that in mind, if I can then move the recommendation in paragraph two of the report, if that's agreed. And item five is the High Street Rail Development Programme, um, and it's the update for September. And Darren's presenting this.
section 4.1 was, was a very impressive set of figures there. I'm just wondering how these maps could be estimated in terms of the CD economic benefits of the region and who actually undertook the work to come up with those sets of figures. They are very impressive. I just want to know about how robust they are and how valid they are. specifically how much more of a greater benefit there will be to the local city region and the national economy of having a full high speed link coming all the way into the city region. So I think in a real accessible and succinct document we've actually highlighted all of those key points. So if we are able to make sure that we sort of feed that into um, the House of Lords inquiry in the strongest of possible senses I think there's some very compelling arguments as part of that. So Thanks for that. If there's no further questions, if I can uh, move the recommendations in paragraph two of the report, if that's agreed. Yeah. Item seven is the One North report, which is a proposition for interconnected North and David. Thank you. 
five uh, core city regions um, across uh, the north of England um, to, to then to challenge for and uh, form uh, a working group uh, called the North One Door and actually pull together in fairly good order, uh, such as one after the last meeting of the ITA before this one, the Workers Commission uh, produced uh, a set of uh, recommendations and concluded. And in section five and two, uh, you can see the highlights of that about how you beyond railways, it's not just about railways, it is about improving rail and road connections between those big cities and towns. But it's also about ensuring the local connectivity, uh, for example, our own rail strategy are delivered across the city, as well as digital connectivity, uh, making sure that uh, the flow of information through digital infrastructure is improved. One of the key uh, emphases of the document is the importance of east-west freight connections, and we've been particularly strong in bringing forward the Mersey Travel um, led the work with the uh, local enterprise partnership to make sure that the local city regions were used uh, were supported, uh, and we funded that from the Sussex to our high speed share budget. The next stage of the work um, is about taking that high level proposition uh, and turning that into a more robust um, set of strategic physical capable and interventions. So, for example, uh, the new train service, the train line that we're proposing, uh, that would go across uh, North England, take that. The work has just been commissioned uh, and will start uh, by the end of this week in taking this work to the next level uh, with the intention that that will be used further for going to uh, the Chancellor's uh, Autumn Estate of the of December and start to make the case for further investment in the North, across the North, uh, by way of the party uh, for the next government um, in 2015. As you can see from the report, uh, the price tag that's associated with at this stage, between 10 and 15 billion pounds. Uh, and it always sounds a, a big number, uh, but actually when you compare it to some of the big national projects that are going uh, cross rail, high speed, sewer, etc., it's actually quite modest as to all the whole of the north of England. And so therefore, it's seen as achievable. And at the launch of the report, um, Chancellor of Exchequer said that we used to quote the phrase of the powerhouse of the world. He's, e he's effectively saying this is the source of things source of scale that the Northern Authority should be looking for and is committed to working with those Northern Authorities further to develop this particular vision. The, the next step, as I say, is further uh, work with the Commission and starts this week, the Commission's report on the meeting tomorrow, and that will then produce the next level of work, bringing those interventions forward to ensure uh, that there's a first cut of that chance of the Northern Statement, and then further work beyond that for infrastructure and urban spending. Um, the financial resource required for the local city region is approximately 50,000 pounds for that work. Uh, Mersey Travel will fund that on behalf of uh, the Mersey Authority of the city region and will be represented uh, from both the political uh, and the office of the city making body for steering group. And again, a significant amount of work will need to take place between now and the end of October to do that. I think we're happy with the work and consistent with our own long term rail strategy and the less technical, less economic plan. Any questions or comments? Well, I would just sort of sum up um, echoing everything that, that David said. And I just think, again, this is one of the most exciting things that's happened in the North for a very long time. You have to think about how very quickly um, city regions in the North have really come together to come up with a package of interventions that can significantly not only maximise the impact of high speed T, but significantly improve connections key way of growing our local economy right across the north. And I think this is absolutely fantastic. I also think it's superb in the sense that um, it's very practical. You know, the time scale proposed of about 15 years is certainly quite doable. The type of interventions that we're talking about are the kind of um, technologies that are already in existence, they're already kind of used in other parts of the country or in other parts of Europe and beyond. And actually the budget, as, as David mentioned, um, it's very nice that it's uh, very similar to the budget which um, 
has, uh, that's been used for Crossrail in London. And I think when you put it in that context, Crossrail in London touched what? About 10 million people in and around London. This package potentially can be um, that cross link for the north of England's 15 million people. It can have a transformational impact for a much larger area, for a much larger population. And let's not forget that if uh, the north of England was a separate economy in the European Union, it would be the eighth largest in the European Union. If we get a package like this in place, my word, how much more can the north really kind of go forward and generate growth and stand on its own two feet? And I think because of all that, this is really exciting. I think where we need to be as a north, and Liverpool City Region is a key part of that, is really strongly arguing that once HS2 begins construction, that this project, this set of interventions, should be seen as the next national infrastructure priority. So I think it's really exciting times, very quickly, that this is coming together, and I think we all should look forward to how we can get behind it and see what we can do to develop it into the future. So if there's nothing else anyone wants to say, if I can then move the recommendations in paragraph two of the report, if that's agreed. And item eight now is 2014-15 uh, quarter one, financial reporting of the local sustainable transport fund um, and LSTF 2015-16. <laughs> Sorry, Marley, that got, got across you there, but I saw a good charitable opportunity. You're okay, Sorry, Marley. So, 